The Late Jurassic, a time when the dinosaurs have come into their full strength. Though no matter how large and powerful they get, all of them are at the mercy of the world they live in, and heat waves cause many of them to seek shelter or risk overheating. As the heat soars at midday, there is little movement in the open fields or even in the shade of the forests. Despite this, one dinosaur is still active, regardless of how hot it may be. An Alaphrosaurus slinks through the undergrowth, searching for food. This long and slender creature is a medium-sized dinosaur that uniquely is omnivorous, able to digest plenty of plants, but today, he has picked up the scent of meat on the wind and is moving to its source. Carrion can be a magnet for all sorts of predators, and there is no shortage of small and medium predators in this area. And so despite the heat, this male has to find the dead creature before competition arrives. The Elaphrosaurus moves along the edge of the forest and eventually finds a clue. There is dried blood on the ground and it leads into the forest. Where the blood is present, the foliage on the ground has been flattened. Clearly the body was dragged from the fields into the cover of the forest. He follows the blood trail cautiously. From the smell, the body is only a day old and whatever made the kill might still be close. Craning his neck up into the air, he sees over the undergrowth and spies the carcass. It is a Miragaya, a species of stegosaur, but one that is quite rare in this region. He also sees something else. Resting in the shrubs not far from the carcass are a pair of Ceratosaurus. Though they aren't the largest predators in this area, they could bite the Elaphrosaurus in half. Both are laying on the ground, with their mouths wide open in order to cool down their bodies. It is a huge risk, but the Elaphrosaurus didn't come all this way for nothing. He lowers himself as close to the ground as possible, and then carefully creeps forward towards the carcass. Every crunch of leaves, every snap of a twig could alert the Ceratosaurus, but it seems that they are too deep in sleep in order to hear the occasional noise and after a painstaking crawl, the Elaphrosaurus gets to the Stegosaur's body. The larger carnivals have mostly stripped the carcass, but there is still ample meat for him to eat, and areas the Ceratosaurus's jaws couldn't access, but the long and thin head of the Elaphrosaurus can reach. Still, he has to be cautious. The sound of flesh being pulled and the movement of the carcass could easily alert the two resting predators. They have obviously gorged themselves over the last day, but that doesn't mean they won't kill him over scraps. The Elaphrosaurus can fit half of his body inside the ribcage of the Miragaya, and picks at the leftover flesh. The constant buzzing of insects also feeding on the carcass, annoying him to no end. He occasionally lifts his head to check on the prone Ceratosaurus. He's never taken a risk quite like this one and his beating heart is the only thing he can hear over the increasingly active insects. But then he does hear something. The rustling of something moving foliage behind him. With his head and neck within the body of the Miragaya, the male Elephrosaurus steadily turns his head to look behind him. Rising out of the undergrowth is the third Ceratosaurus that has been sleeping this entire time. Having focused on the first two, he had completely missed the third, and had in fact walked right past her. The awakening predator steadily lifted her head, revealing a large scar across her jaw. She yawned and stretched her neck, apparently only just waking up. The Elaphrosaurus didn't move. If he was lucky, she would go back to sleep. However, now might be the time to take what he could and leave. The large female Ceratosaurus groggily opened her eyes and then looked around the area. She was still half asleep, and on the first pass didn't even seem to notice the Elaphrosaurus half submerged in the Stegosaur corpse. On the second pass, however, her pupils focused, and her long jaws faced right at the lanky scavenger. The two dinosaurs' eyes locked, and the Elaphrosaurus knew the jig was up. He tore a piece of flesh away from the carcass with his jaws and pulled himself between the bones and bolted away. The female Ceratosaurus pulled herself up and made a lunge, but her jaws missed the lean dinosaur that leapt onto a log 
and scurried into the undergrowth, disappearing amongst the greenery. The two male Ceratosaurus awoke startled by the female snapping her jaws. Their eyes darted around looking for threats, but there were none. The female snorted in annoyance and went back to lay down, but this time she positioned herself with a clear view of the carcass, not wanting any more scavengers to slip past and get at their world-earned kill. The Elaphrosaurus ran for a short while before coming to a stop. He was now boiling hot. The risk was worth it though. He could now rest and not have to worry about starving. At least for today. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down a rather unusual resident of the late Jurassic, Elaphrosaurus. Elaphrosaurus was originally discovered in 1910 in the Tendagaru formation of Tanzania, and its name means light-footed lizard. The holotype was a mostly complete skeleton, however it lacked a skull and arms, though this is enough to properly identify it and its unique characteristics. Some fragmentary remains from the Morrison formation have also been attributed to this species. Now it may look a lot like a Coelophysid, and at one point it was placed in that family. Over the last century, its place in Dinosauria was moved around over six times. Now with phylogenetic analysis, Elaphrosaurus is seen as a species of Ceratosaur, though one of a few odd traits. Elaphrosaurus reached lengths of up to 6.2 metres long, and stood 1.5 metres tall at the hip, and weighed between 180 and 250 kilograms. Its body was very long and thin, one of the many reasons it was seen as a coelophysid. One scientist in 1988 noted that it was the longest bodied and shallowest chested theropod it had ever examined, with the neck and tail also being quite thin. The tibia was considerably longer than the thigh bone, meaning that it was a good runner. Though the neck was very long, the lack of vertebra indicates not only that it wasn't very flexible, but that it was only able to support a lightweight and small head. For a long time, Elaphrosaurus was seen as a fast predator that would target small prey, like ornithopods, and not the large herbivores it lived alongside, such as sauropods and stegosaurs. Without a skull, however, it is difficult to truly know if this was a carnivore, which is why scientists have looked to its closest relative, Limiosaurus. This species is also a theropod, but was likely an omnivore, or even a herbivore, leading scientists to speculate that a Laphrosaurus may have been the same. Until a skull is found, this will remain an unknown. But if so, it would make a Laphrosaurus one of the few theropods to feed on plants. This is also why I depicted a Laphrosaurus as a scavenger. You don't have to have a flexible neck in order to pick at a carcass. Really, this one detail changes the species' entire way of life. If it was a herbivore, it would have used its long neck to browse on higher plants, and its speed to outrun predators. But if it was an omnivore, it would have used its speed to hunt down small prey, but likely still had to avoid the area's larger predators. Ultimately, it's a bit of an enigma, and seems like one of those species that is a bit out of its time. And that's what makes it so interesting. But what do you think of Elaphrosaurus? What lesser known species would you like me to break down in a future episode? And until then, thank you for watching.